Hey guys, it's me, Wilson, and we're back for another video on F122. Before we get on with this video, you might hear my voice is uh, pretty finished. Um, I'm not very well right now, so... Yeah, <clears throat> I'm going to struggle to be exciting in this video, but um, I'm quite behind on my uploads for PSGL. I'm like two weeks behind the race. Um, as of recording this, I just uploaded Spain, and I finished France, and like, France is already over in the season. Um, so Spa was last week, but yeah, so I'm just trying to get through this as quickly as I can, so apologies that I sound like a robot. Um, I've been pretty ill for the last few days, so not ideal, but um, yeah, we move. Um, we're here at Spa, round 7, I'm pretty sure. Um, and yeah, I always enjoy Spa. Um, it's quite an RNG track. That kind of ruins it. Um, it's a nice track when you get it right. I mean, I'm sure every driver enjoys the tracks they're good at. But when you get it right, it's nice, it's flowing. But to get it right is really difficult. You need to be so on the limit. And on the limit in this game is really a pot of luck sometimes. Um, sometimes you rear lock randomly. Sometimes car doesn't want to stick to the ground sometimes understeers all over the shop so um yeah it's going to be a tough a tough qualifying session spa is always one of the most tricky qualifying sessions of the year of the season um just one of those tracks that are extremely difficult to hook up um but yeah we're here in q1 hopefully we can get through just through one run which is the goal every week obviously um so let's see what we can do Starting our Q1 lap. Grip is very low in Q1. And um, I think I remember last time we were at Spa was at the start of the game, PSGL. And we got through in Q1 uh, on one run. And that was uh, a very good grid. Um, so we usually have our chances pretty well here. Um, we're on a point zero split. Uh, which, if we have a good last, this should be through. If we do a point one last, this will be a point one um, overall lap. So, um, yeah, pretty much just about having a clean chicane now, and we will not need to go out again. And you can see, I know that, the in through the nose, out through the mouth technique right there. And um, we go through the last chicane. It was a little bit tentative, a little bit slow, but um, it'll do the job. And it's a 1-7 across the line. That puts us professionally P1 ahead of a few people there. And as you can see, we do retire in the garage because we're P3. With the last runs to go, and that is easily safe. I think the cutoff in esports was a point one, so yeah, we're easily safe with that. Um, that's not going to be an issue to get through. And um, yeah, there it is. We actually drop to P9, which is more further down than I expected. I dropped to be honest. Um, but yeah, as you can see, Yarno, you can't see it by my face cam, but I think he got through by about a thousandth. Um, so not a lot. Cameron Dowd's. Uh, he's a F3 driver, I think, that got called up. He qualified last, but at the same time, can you blame him? It's his first F1 race, and um, he is an F3 driver, I think. So, yeah, a tough grid for him to be competing against. Um, but, yeah, we're on our first Q2 lap here. This is on a fresh set, a 13-8 split. That's about three tenths or so, two and a half, quicker than our Q1 split. So this will be a 0 0.9, 0 0.8 maybe. Um, but again, we've still got the bus stop to go, which is a very difficult chicane. Let's see what we can do here. Breaking at the 100 meter board down to third. And we missed that a little bit. And um, yeah, that was a little bit tentative from us. And not ideal. And a 9-5. Like so, with that, we set P4M. Um, not entirely safe. So, we did go again. I think we're going to go again anyway, because we had one set. Um, we saved in Q1, so we're just going to burn the set anyway. Um, may as well. I guess you could save it for safety cars, but as well as we're P4, so I don't know how safe we actually are. Um, so yeah, let's see what we can do. We might need to improve in this lap, so this lap could count crucial at the end of this session. It's going into turn 1, I, th I believe it's called Le Sauce. Uh, we take 3rd gear, we've got a little bit deep into turn 1, up to 4th gear, and then onto the power. We're 300 down, but... It looks bad, it's not really the end of the world. Um, sector 2 is pretty much as long as Austria. So you've got a lot more corners to make up your time 
through this track, so that's not the end of the world. If we're pretty much equal in the delta going into bus stop, we can improve on this lap. Coming up to Lock Home now, this is the trickiest part of the track. I'm sure most drivers agree. We go very deep through there and we actually cut, if you can see in the bottom left hand side of the map. We do cut and um, yeah, now we're going to have to pray and hope that we are um, through. We're just going to have to pray our first lap was enough. Um, and we're waiting for Yarno in the bottom left hand screen. Bottom left hand of your screen. Did he fuck it? And <laughs> you can see my face. I am so lucky. That is the that is a bit of luck we needed this season. We get through very marginally. I believe Yarno had a issue or something, um, which prevented him from getting through or something like that. And then I think he also made a mistake in the last corner, which didn't help him. So we can count our lucky stars there, as Lucas said to me um, during this stream. So yeah, at least we got our first lap in. It's a shame we messed up that final chicane as we lost about half tenth to a tenth and we would have easily been through um, but you know that's just what we do um, but yeah we're now finishing our first Q3 lap 0.7 split and again faster than the previous qualifying session if we have a good last tier this could be a 0.7 usually in Q3 you're expecting low zeros or nines in the last depending on your wings um, wings are quite fluctuating at this track um, but let's see what we can do going into the last chicane. I struggled with this chicane all day in practice. I just couldn't get it right. Um, I don't know if it's set up or what, but I just couldn't do it. And we do an 8-3, which isn't great. Um, if that is our end lap, I believe we will not be top 8. Um, so we're going to have to improve that. But here we go. Now is the time. This is the lap that matters. We need to hook up this lap. This is the lap that is the most important lap of the whole qualifying session 45 minutes leading up to this lap and you get one chance to do it so let's see what we can do you can see we're just checking all of the times as we go out checking our own sectors it's good to look at your own sectors before you start your lap so you have a reference in your head and um, there's a lot going on in these qualifying sessions a lot of pressure your heart's to the roof so it's good to check these these sectors and um really know what your what your goal or what your target is um, where you want your delta to be. So let's see what we can do starting this lap. Again, this is the lap that matters. So it's going to be full send throughout this one minute and 40 second lap time. Do it down to turn one, breaking out the 100 meter board down to third gear. And we get that tucked in extremely nicely. Extremely good drive out of that corner. Now we're ramping up the gears through to Eau Rouge. We're 400s up on our first sector. I believe this could be a 0.6 first sector for our wings is a fairly decent first sector. So let's see what we can do. Opening the DRS now and down this big long straight, preparing ourselves for Lake Om, the hardest part in the track. If you get this right, there's a lot of time to be found. We break at the 50 meter board down to fourth gear, up to fifth. Do this left hander, hugging it as much as we can. Do this right, taking as much inside curve as we can. And we gain a 10th through that section through to this downhill right hander we go a little bit deep but we get it brought back in crucially for the next right then through this left we call it no name clipping this curb and the car wants to oversteer a bit car losing rear end grip there a little bit over the limit through pull on fling it in down to se seventh gear a little bit of a lift and we're 1.2 tenths up on the delta we've got a lot of time in this last bit though through piff path this right hander fourth gear fifth gear sixth gear through this little chicane using all of the track in the right hand side this next right hander a lot of track in the inside and then using all the road next it's a 5-3 split with a good last sector here this could be a 0.4 or a low 5 we could be in contention for a pole here with a good bus stop chicane we've been struggling with a bus stop chicane all weekend through Blanchimont what can we do coming up to the bus stop chicane it is crucial we nail this corner down to third gear we get the front end bit in but we go a little bit wide through the last corner up to fourth gear opening DRS rattling up the gears up to the line it's a point five five two, and you can see my engineers and friends in the call were very happy and uh, a five five two. you can see the last is a zero one six not awful not the worst but you can see that last corner I think loss is about 400s maybe um, wouldn't have made the difference for pole but would have made the difference for P2 uh, as Barry invalidated but these things happen and to be honest I was struggling with that last chicane so much um, I'm not sure why I think my car just 
had a lot of understeer built into it and it did not help at that last corner. Um, the car was very stable in the rear end, which helped a lot through like the middle and Lecom. Um, but yeah, through slow speed, apart from turn one, it was really nice. Through slow speed, it just yeah, it was a bit of a handful, and you really had to get the corner right to gain time. Um, so yeah, that is that. But we're starting P3, a good grid position. I believe this might be the highest up we've started all season. Um, I could be wrong. We've got a lot of P5s, I think, in quality. Uh, so yeah, here we go. Three red lights, four red lights, five red lights. And away we go for the Belgium Grand Prix. We get a really good launch again in PSGL. Going down to turn one now. Jake Benham's actually on the medium, so we're not really going to fight him too much as we go up the inside of Barry. Not trying to fight it, more of just trying to defend from positions behind. We are going to use our battery so Jake doesn't try and make it side by side up or rouge. And to be honest with you, I'm really not going to fight it. I know the cars ahead are in lower wings than me. Um, and we're just going to let Jake by. To be honest, fighting this would be... Pretty stupid, he's on the medium tyre, um, I forgot to show you the weather forecast though, and um, pretty much in the weather forecast at the start of the race, there's one rain block halfway through the race, so um, it's going to make it interesting, there's one rain block and then it goes back to dry, so this will be, this will make for an interesting race, will we stay out in the dries, will we pit for enters, that is if the rain comes heavy enough, um, so it's going to be a strategic race I believe, um, a pretty tough one as well. But, yeah, halfway through lap one now, and we've held position fairly nicely, just trying to build a rhythm. At the start of these races, you go from a full quality session of eight laps or something, where you're on the grippiest tyres, you're on the lowest amount of fuel, the highest engine mode, the highest ERS, all this, and then you go to this, and it's the car's heavy, the car's got no grip, the car's slow in a straight. You're braking sometimes later because the car's so slow in a straight. Um, so it's really hard to really get into a rhythm in these races sometimes and um, that's what we're trying to do right now as they fight ahead uh, I believe someone's off the track there I think that might have been Jake I can't really see on this screen and uh, maybe Barry um, but yeah Jake just got through those drivers and he's trying to pull a gap so as you can see Barry he's eight tenths ahead of us Luke Smith eight tenths behind us and the gap between all the drivers is growing pretty substantially as we're pretty much trying to match Jake's pace right now who is on a quicker compound of tyre. Um, and actually, oh, as you can see, Jake Benham has spun out of this Grand Prix. So that's a massive turning point in this race. And we immediately get onto the batteries. We're going to know Barry Burman might be going for the move on Thomas. And that is a huge turning point in this race. Jake Benham spinning out of this race, which is an unusual mistake from him. And we move to lap six and you can see it already starts raining. DRS has <coughs> been disabled and um, it's looking like we're going to have to be making a decision this lap if we want to pit. It's do or die to be honest at this point. If we pit or not, yeah, we, we have to make a decision here. Um, and as I said, in the on the grid, on um, the wee screen you have, it was one block of rain, just one. I think you have about eight blocks or something like that. In, on your screen so one block is not a long period of rain so there was a lot of drivers I believe thinking we could stay out and dry and so maybe it only last a lap and then we'll, we'll be fine um, then we've got track position type thing but you can see we're only it's only been raining for what 30 seconds or something and it's already completely damp and as you can see, we're trying to figure out Lucas Blakely it was helping the engineer as well as Antoine as we have a massive snap into the pit lane and we do pit for enters. I was unsure if it was the right idea at the time, but then I looked at the pit lane and everyone else pit with us, um, apart from like two cars, which we know we could get um, on these inter tyres. So that was good for us that everyone else pit. Uh, we've made the right decision there. Um, as I believe Barry got jumped actually in the pit lane here, um, which doesn't really make sense considering ghosting's on. Um, but you can see Jake stayed out. He was the one who spun. Um, I think Berezny and Harvey Cowan also stayed out. Um, so we're just going to have to clear them, but you can see how much more grip we have. We even made a mistake at Rouge, and look at Jake. He's halfway down the corner, and he's still sliding. So we're going to get past Jake 
fairly easily down this straight. Um, I'm sure he wasn't really trying to fight that as we go into Lecomte. And yeah, we got one more dry runner ahead of us. We did overtake Harvey during that middle sector. I believe this is, yeah, Danny Bresney. He stayed out in the hards. And to be honest, it's a fair gamble to make for them. Um, if you're that far back, you may as well make the gamble. I mean, you've got nothing to lose. Uh, nothing to lose at all, to be honest. Um, but yeah, on to lap 11. Chana Kinchi retires from the race. He might have put it into the wall. And a safety car comes out. And yeah, again, that is not what we needed. That is really not ideal. And we move a few laps on, two laps on. And the rain has stopped. And this has completely screwed us over because two laps ago when that safety car came out, people pit for medium tyres, banking that it would dry up before the end. Um, pretty much because they had nothing to lose. If you're P19 and if you're P10 like or below and you see a safety car has came out and your engineer's telling you it dries up in five minutes, you may as well pit onto the mediums. What have you got to lose? You're going to lose zero points if it goes wrong. Do you know what I mean? So we had a lot to lose fighting for a podium position. And we left it too late to pit, as well as a lot of cars around us. We put on the mediums, and it looks like we're going to be coming out in about P10 or so in this race. So that's a potential podium. Could be gone, this race. Um, which really does not help. And yeah, P10. So we've got a lot of ground to make up. Again, I, I could blame this in fortune, but it's just one of those things where... We didn't really, we had too much to lose, to be honest. Um, and a lot of these cars had nothing to lose around us. So, yeah, it's, I guess you could count it as unlucky. But safe car restart happens. And, yeah, nothing really exciting. Just trying to set up the exit of this corner. And, yeah, it's quite frustrating. At this time, I was extremely angry, I'm not going to lie. Um... I was not very happy, but let's focus on the race as we have an awful turn one. We've got Luke Smith right behind us, three tenths. Um, is going to make be able to make a move through Eau Rouge? Absolutely not, because it's Eau Rouge, and it looks like he's under pressure from Ismail. So as long as we stay on this battery, we should be fine. You can see they're going side by side. I was a little bit feared that they were going <laughs> to completely send it and take me out, but they didn't. Uh, but yeah, moving on to lap 16, a lot of carnage ahead, and Luke Smith thought it was a great idea to go for a move at this time. He does go for a move, and oh, we get half spun. Jesus now Ismail Fast is going for the move on us, and it's just going from bad to worse again in this PSGL race. Really seems to not be going our way, but we're now going into turn 1. We're going to try everything we can to defend from Ismail Fast. We're going to push him all the way onto this curb, leaving just enough space, and now it's about who's going to back out. Who is going to keep it pinned to the floor going through Eau Rouge? We keep it pinned. He keeps it pinned up Eau Rouge. We're going to push him to the limit of the track. And we keep our position going through into Lake Home. Now, we are in fairly high wing. So, I was expecting him to gain a little bit. He was also a little bit in the slipstream of Luke Smith. Now, we need to break extremely late. We're trying to break as late as we can. But there's not much we can do. Thankfully, Ismail leaves the space. Thomas Ronhar has actually been spun. I think Barry and him had an incident. And, um... Yeah. Moving on to lap 17, Otis Lawrence puts it in the wall at Puhon, and that brings out their s our second safety car of the race, which, again, is um, probably not great for us, because we're just getting into a rhythm. And it gives the guys ahead, who are in the lead of this race, time to focus up. Their tyres will be a bit more worn than us, and you can see by my face, I'm just fed up at this point. And... Um, all this weaving is really tiring out my arms, I'm not going to lie. So, <laughs> yeah, P9 with three laps to go. Let's see what we can salvage from this race. It's a shame we should be where Luke Smith was, um, if not for that incident. Um, so it could have been a lot more so far. And, yeah, let's just see what we can do. I'm past the point of caring, but yeah, safety car restart has happened. And you see I'm trying to heat up the tyres. You're not allowed to overtake until you're past the finish line. Um, so you may as well just set up your exit, get your tyres heated up, and let's see what we can do. Alvaro Caraton behind us. He doesn't look to be proposing a threat anytime soon as we go through turn one. And it looks like it's going to be a fairly boring last few, la 
<coughs> laps for us, excuse me. Um, unless something massive can happen. We are using a lot of batch here, just making sure we're safe from any threat. And yeah, it looks like it's going to be fairly boring. Ismail in front of us, he's not slow. Um, Alvaro behind, he's not slow either. But it looks like we're all fairly similar pace. Um, the cars ahead might cause some chaos as there's a yellow flag and that's Patrick Sipos who spun around. He was one of those drivers who took the gamble. But now, moving on to the last lap, halfway through the last lap, you can see how congested the field is. This is because there's so many drivers in this train. As someone's right now, I'm not sure that was, it's Phil Prejnader. There's so many drivers right now on this train on old medium tyres who pit when it was raining. Their tyres were getting scrubbed a lot. They've got a lot of wear. As Thomas Ronhart was sideways through Blanchemont into the last corner. Can we make any moves? Can we capitalise on anyone's mistakes? As Jake Benham pretty much spears us into the last corner. We're going to get a 25 second time penalty or whatever going round the final corner. We dropped to P15 or something um, which I can tell you was removed but um <laughs> yeah, Jake Benham strikes once again. Um, he's definitely became a bit more aggressive. Um, <laughs> maybe more aggressive than brains, but yeah, I'm not too sure what he was thinking there. Um, clearly forgot what his brake pedal was. Um, but yeah, an amateur mistake from Benham, but these things happen. He didn't have a great race. Spun and <laughs> that. Uh, but yeah, I... Yeah, we finished P6 in the end of that after penalty removals and penalties being added. Uh, Istvan won, um, which just shows you how crazy that race was. Cameron got P3, which shows you how even more crazy that race was. I think he was one of the people as well with Pukki who gambled onto the medium tyres uh, in the rain. So, yeah, again, um, great race from them, but I think that's just one of those races where... It's just a pot of luck and sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. I believe Yarno could have easily, um, apparently Yarno's on for the win that race, but then he went back to the Inters and it's one of these things in the heat of the moment, you really can't decide. It's easy to say now that, oh yeah, why didn't you do it? But in the heat of the moment when you're thinking, oh, we could be on for a P3 here, is it really worth risking all that? And sometimes the game doesn't dry up, sometimes it does. Um, so yeah, these things happen and... I guess, I don't know if you would, you could call that luck, I just think that's being unfortunate, um, which seems to be the story of our season so far. I'm happy with how quality went though, uh, we showed pace and we were on for P3, um, but yeah, it's what it is, these things happen, that is racing, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video, I'm trying to get these videos out as quickly as I can, um, yeah, if you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.